point of view, um, I'm Okay, from my point of view, I'm uh, done with the introduction already. So therefore I hand over to uh, Mentos um, with his part. Yes. Um, I would like to introduce uh, you to, uh, to Jeff. Uh, we met some time ago uh, at a, um, a coaching agile teams uh, training with Lisa Atkins in 2010. This was 12 years ago. And it could have been that we've met earlier at a scrum gathering, but we don't both don't remember the old people with gray hair. So, um, and uh, I, I like what uh, um, Jeff is doing um, with writing the books and uh, um, what he's presenting there, uh, the stance um, uh, of the scrum master, uh, the ideas all around this. And uh, I'm really glad uh, that you're here, Jeff. Thanks. Thank That's you. good. Another reason why we might not remember is that there seemed to be quite a bit of alcohol in those earlier. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I think uh, uh, I, I was inspired to invite uh, Jeff when Jeff uh, put out a, um, posted, uh, a post uh, on LinkedIn uh, stating, I will give back my CST badge that I earned in 2005. And uh, from there, um, it all started. <laughs> so, uh, Jeff, would you like to uh, tell us a bit about your pathway to Scrum Mastery? Sure. So, um, I've got a lot of love for the Scrum Alliance. Like Mentor said, I've, I've been a, a guide level representative of the Scrum Alliance since 2005, but I was a Scrum Master back in 2001. Um, so, I've been associated with that organization for, organization for a long time. I've helped shape some of the, the education programs. Um, I've, I've helped bring a coaching focus into the fold um, and seen it grow through lots of different changes in leadership. Um, and it's done, I think, a fantastic job despite some of the criticism that any organization gets um, these days. I think it's done a fantastic job over the last 20 years or so. And, the fact that I'm giving back my CST doesn't mean that I think any less of it. Um, I will explain why, um, and maybe it'll make sense. I'm not sure. But I'll just briefly explain to you what I'm doing instead. So I've spent the last year or so um, offering an alternative to companies who come to me. Just checking you're seeing a screen rather than a black screen. Yes, we are seeing the black screen. We're seeing a black screen. Let's try swapping displays. How's yes. that? Perfect. Um, so, yes, so the companies that, that come to me and ask for some help with, with their, their scrum masters, their teams, their leadership, their organization, it's, it's quite common for someone to come to me and ask for a training course. Um, and no, I, I enjoy my training courses. I think, I think they're pretty good. I think um, a lot of people get some value from them, a lot of value from them. But where I have seen most success is where that training has been coupled with some other kind of support. And so I tried to make something a lot more explicit in terms of support for people in their particular roles. And it's, it's something that, it's one of those things that where you, you look back 10 years ago and you think, oh, why didn't I do this 10 years ago? Um, it kind of makes a lot of sense, but I'm calling it pathways because they they are focused around getting people on you know, helping them on their journey to use that that cliche if you can remember back to when you started off as a scrum master or, or a product owner or, or an agile coach or, or whatever role that you've got it's there's a lot of new there's a lot of validation of you know the common sense that you've been doing for years anyway but there's also a lot of new and no matter how good the training course is, you can only take away a certain proportion of that new knowledge. Um, and the rest will hopefully, you know, in a, in a, if you're lucky, sit in the back of your mind, ready to be called upon later on. But more often than not, it kind of gets lost when you hit the real challenges. So I've tried to kind of formalize a lot of the things that I've been doing with the companies that I've been working with, the teams that I've been working with, and the various tools and support structures that I've created over the years into something 
that I think is a lot more comprehensive and, and so far the results mm. are pretty good. Um, the, one of the uh, one of the people that I work with came up with this this agile manifesto sort of um, homage, I suppose you'd call it, where in a similar kind of vein, if anyone has read any of my books, you'll know that I focus on good and great. I don't I don't focus too much on anti patterns. I think that's lazy to say what people are doing badly. Um, I like good and I like great. And so training courses are good things. Individual reflection, good things. Going on a journey on your own can be fun. All right. Having some certainty over what you're doing and having some, some, some confidence in, the, in one way of doing things, really, really useful. But equally, I think having a, some continuity over your learning pathway working with the same people that were on your training course working with the same trainer that was on your training course when you're getting into the actual coaching around the real life scenarios exploring things as a group having someone guide you as you're navigating that that world of, of uncertainty in that new area um, and coupling the theory with some immersive practice has generally been significantly uh, significantly more successful um, get past that there's a pathway um, so it starts off with a workshop, which is based on you know, my, my, my ideas, my, my history, my stories, my experiences of, of what makes Scrum Masters really successful. I, I generally do them in person. I'm not a big fan of the online training environment, but other people do run them online. Um, and as well as the online um, so the in-person or the online actual workshop, it's coupled with five half day, once a month, getting together, working through real live problems, filling in the gaps, refreshing the bits from the workshop that perhaps got lost because we were focusing on other things that were more pressing at the time. All of the, the modules that we go through in the workshops, people have video access to them forever. They have access to a smartphone app, which gives them you know, daily prompts if they want it or reminders when they want them at a time of their choosing. And then six months later, once they've got six months more of real experience, real chance to put that theory into practice and reflect on that practice together. And as a group, we come back and we build on that knowledge, same people, the same group, the same trainer with some, some another layer, another level of scrum mastery in this context. So it combines a number of different things. It combines in-person workshop as a group, um, real life coaching uh, based on real scenarios, books, smartphone apps, videos, and a community forum where they can talk in real time in a safe private space. The idea being that it combines all the different ways of taking in information and making sense of information so that more learning sticks, more skills stick, more confidence sticks. Um, and like I said, the, the, it's, it's a startup, all right? This is, this, is a, this is a new offering. It's something that is very different to, to what companies are used to asking for and what people are used to putting on their CVs. Uh, but it's already had interest from all around the world um, and again, people saying that, yeah, it is more of a commitment. It is um, harder to get a company to actually say, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do something for six months rather than two days. But the results are significantly better. I've got a number of people who are working with me, offering this, this kind of thing, who believe in this, who believe that actually helping people get better at their job is not just a one-off transactional relationship but more of a commitment on behalf of the person guiding those people as well as the person receiving the information so that's a little bit of why what i am doing i did say i would tell you why i've chosen not to um if i can work out how to stop the share um not to keep my cst so one of the people that i've got um working for me they're working for me they're not working for me they're working for themselves but they're working with me um, is a scrum.org trainer and you know, one of the questions he asked me was can i could i do this as well as my psm and I, well why not why wouldn't you What's, what why would i stop you from doing that and a client called me and said you know i want some 
CSM classes. I want some advanced Scrum Master classes. I said, well, I could do that, but I'm not going to. I'm still a CST right now because of the way things run. They run to the end of the year, right? But I haven't run a CSM class for a long time. I said, I'm not going to do that because even though what I'm doing, I believe, offers higher stretched learning objectives, certainly than the CSM, possibly even than the ACSM, um, is if I offered you my my validation, my verification, my badges, and a CSM, I wouldn't learn anything about the actual value that my program offers to the world. So I want to test it against all the other products out there. I don't want, I want a clean experiment. I don't want to muddy the waters by saying, well, yeah, you could have this, or you could have this and a CSM. That doesn't really tell me anything. So I'm, I'm kind of, making things more difficult for myself because I could be offering more than I am, but I really want to learn more about my product as quickly as possible. So that's, that's my spiel. Okay, thank you very much for these insights, Jeff. Um, now we come to a point where we say we want to um get some more information and also um, include mentors in the uh, in an interview and of course all of you listeners as well or participants and if you have any questions to Jeff or mentors um, then um, write them in the uh, chat and then we can um, work us through all the questions you also have on the topics we were now um, if, if there's to. any question right now uh, to Jeff we could start also with this If you have any questions, you can now speak up because we do not have any questions in the chat. I just have one question, uh, Jeff. Uh, thanks for introducing to the Scrum Mastery Pathways. But uh, what's the in total invest time-wise? So I heard half days, half days. So what's all together? Yeah. So that the, the, bare, the bare minimum, if you like, is a two-day workshop followed by five half-day workshops, followed by a two-day workshop. So the bare minimum is six and a half days, all right? Spread over six months. Personally, when I do this, I offer one-to-one -one coaching with the people on my, co my cohorts as well. Um, sometimes we'll have more than that. We'll have workshops after the, six month, the second six-month workshop. So it's, it's tailorable. But the base level that all of the, the licensed guides that, that I've, that I've um, trained up myself will be offering is at least a two-day workshop. Some of them are offering three. Some of them are offering more. Some of them are offering full-day workshops, but at least a half-day a month. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, maybe I have a follow-up question uh, regarding that. Um, mm. how, how if you speak in if you speak in terms of learning objectives, you know, you know these lists of learning objectives you have to cover for the different uh, certifications. Uh, do you have a mapping? Do, is it so much different from the advanced and the CSP uh, variants? Uh, I mean, could you kind of offer like uh, a customized version that includes all these learning objectives, so you could maybe get uh, both certification or something like that? Yeah, so, I mean, that's a good question. And it's something that I think there will be, with, before long, that will be an offering on the market. And yes, I could be doing that myself. So a little bit of a um, slightly boring background is that um, I like to think, I don't think anyone can really prove this either way, but I like to think that I was one of the people that helped create the advanced CSM course curriculum uh, because Paul Goddard and I were teaching advanced CSM. Well, we, we didn't call it advanced CSM. It was advanced Scrum Master training back then uh, before they were, when there was only CSM. That's the only thing there was. And we were asked by the Scrum Alliance to provide uh, our course content as input into that. And, you know, that's kind of where the ACSM came from. So there's, there's an element of, well, we taught that because we thought it was good. We didn't have, we weren't, constrained by the learning objectives at the time because there were none 
over time, the, the CSM and the ACSM learning objectives have changed slightly. Um, and you know, the, the program that they've got at the moment is, is still very flexible in what it allows people to teach. But I was surprised, personally, having helped create both curriculums, that they weren't more similar. So what that said to me was there was stuff that I wanted to teach that I wasn't teaching in my ACSM classes. Now that's not to say it's necessarily better, but it freed me up to look at that. But like I said, there's no reason why somebody who was, let's say a CST, let's say Mentos, just as a hypothetical argument, um, says, well, I would like to be able to, to do this. And um, you know, if, if I looked at the learning objectives that you have and the curriculum that you have, I could actually run a three day ACSM and I could give them all of your badges and that Scrum Alliance badge. And that's, you know, that, that's I believe that will happen before long. Uh, I'm not going to do that, like I said at the moment, because for me, I don't learn enough about my product just yet. And as a product owner, the learning about the market appetite and the feedback for, for what's wanted and what's needed and what companies are willing to pay for and invest in their people in is more important to me than getting those, those extra people, if that makes sense. Cool. Dieter, you had your hand up. Yes, my question is, uh, how specific is your path? Is it strictly focused on Scrum Masters? Or the, the, the reason is, uh, I think, to know your job uh, out of the perspective of a pro, uh, product owner or a developer or uh, as a dev op is also very helpful yeah so uh in, in the the way i found for the company i worked for was to hold a three-day basic training starting from uh design thinking through the all these things uh, minimal viable product as a, a lean startup to uh uh classical requirements engineering up to DevOps. So for all the people, the same basics, mm -hmm. so that they then, I can't give them a certification because I'm not a CST, but I gave them a basic knowledge about every view of it. And then they decide what the, the role is they worked mm -hmm. in and half a, year late, half a year later, then they get a specific CS, uh, CSM training or CSPO training and so on. And I think uh, the, the benefit of that is that if you already have worked for half a year in this role, you have totally other questions to your CST about uh, what you are, want to know. It's because if you, if you send someone who's absolutely newbie in a CST course, course he will leave the course and say, Now I'm a certified uh, scrum master, but what 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 did I know about this? Yeah, at least yeah. nothing. So, is your your path very focused on scrum master, or how do you handle this bright view for all these roles? Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. So there there are actually a couple of things that I you know I should have said. I was a little bit too brief. Um, so people who are attending this scrum mastery pathway they need to know what Scrum is, first of all. Okay, so one of my frustrations might be too strong a word, but let's say frustrations, is that when I used to teach the CSM class, it, over the years, it got more and more, the learning objectives got more and more basic. It, it, it basically was an introduction to Scrum with a little bit about being a Scrum Master. And that's not, It sounds like a criticism, but it's not. The one, the one criticism that I would have is that about Mentos is probably better with dates than me, but I'm going to say around about 2008, there was a big conversation within the Scrum Alliance about whether the CSM should be rebranded, whether it should be become a certified Scrum introductions course. Certified Scrum beginner. Yeah. We, we also had this at the... Um... Scrum gathering in Amsterdam in, I think it was 2010 or 2011, a long discussion. Um. And 
I can I can understand the difficulties with doing that because you'd had maybe <laughs> two hundred thousand people who already had that certification who would then you know, they signed up for one thing and it's going to be turned into something else. But that for you know, for, for for good or bad, the, the the best decision they could at the time and that was to not do that, uh, and so. The CSM was the gateway for many organizations. And so, as you say, you get people turning up to these classes who, aren't, who are never going to be a scrum master. Everybody knows they're not going to be a scrum master. People who are paying them to go on the course know that's not going to happen. And yet you're trying to teach them the same things. Um, so there is a prerequisite knowledge of scrum, which doesn't, you know, it's not that difficult to get a prerequisite knowledge of scrum. You, you can have a very quick workshop in that. Um, but yeah, the idea here is that this is purely focused on that scrum master role and getting really really good at it developing the skills you need to be really effective in that role not what is scrum the second part to that is that yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't be looking for i would be telling product owners not to come to this i have a separate product mastery pathway okay based on product mastery same structure same flow same things you know the, the video courses the workshops all that kind of stuff but focus on so how do you be a really really effective product owner okay again they would need to know the basics of scrum before they turn up to that and similarly i, I have one for, for team mastery so you so you're part of an agile team what does it mean to be a really 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 good agile team member right? what does a really great agile team look like how does it work what's required from you how can you get that so role specific and again for coaches so different types of pathways for the different roles so they can really focus on their role i hope that helps yep thank you then class is ha um, having a hand yeah. thanks jeff i haven't read your book yet <laughs> but i will <laughs> i just downloaded it Okay. I I was impressed by the subtitle because many years ago, I read uh, Servant Leadership, and even more years ago, I read Jim Collins' Good to Great. So I wonder, how much will the book be inspired by the other two? Very much so. They're the two of um, I mean, more more Greenleaf and Collins. To be fair, are my inspirations, but um, yeah, Greenleaf massive inspiration for me. I thoroughly recommend anybody on this Zoom call if you haven't. Search out Greenleaf's work, The Servant as Leader. It's from a long time ago, but it's still, in, in, in many ways, even more relevant now than it was when it was written. Yeah. Um, even if, yes, it's focused on society as a whole rather than the world of business, but the same principles underpinning that around enabling other people, uh, around you know, the, the toxicity of the, the, the power pyramid and, and all these kinds of things, that it's... It's really based in that. I, I truly believe the Scrum Master role was created with, with that in mind. It saddened me that the most recent Scrum Guide took the term servant leader out yeah. um, because of that. So if you, I, I'd like to think that if you do read that book, you will recognize a number of things that, that probably have been borrowed too heavily from Greenleaf, maybe. I don't know, but you would probably see some, some overlaps there. And similarly, you know, when I write about product owners, we can only see the world through our own lens and you know, we, we see what we expect to see and all these kinds of things. So I, I am biased, I, I admit that, um, we all are. But when I, the product owners that I've seen really, really successful aren't just the ones that are really good at creating a vision or user stories or personas or roadmaps or anything. They can engage with people. You know, they actually they actually know that the skills of the team in a complex environment are essential, and they need to engage them. They need to coach them. They need to give them some slack, but they also need to be firm at times as well. So, but, but the emotional intelligence and you know, almost an enabling product owner is essential for success as well. So it's a long winded answer, but yeah. the other part of, of the Jim Collins thing goes back to my almost the, you know, my view of the Agile Manifesto is that the Agile Manifesto doesn't focus really on bad stuff. I know a lot of people looked at it and thought documentation, we hate documentation, we hate all that, but it wasn't. It was, this is all good. Yeah, so let's leverage the good. And you know, especially when it came to the team mastery book that I wrote, I tried to make a really, really strong point that 
don't let me talking about what great looks like make you feel intimidated to not try. So as well as my agile work, I do a lot of coaching work and quite a lot of people that I coach struggle with perfectionism. And some people, when, when they see something that they can't do perfectly, would just rather not try than do something 95%. And so a lot of the teams that I work with, I say, look, don't worry about great yet. Because trust me, the amount of teams and organizations that I've seen, if you can be a good team with a good scrum master, then you're well ahead of the game anyway. All right. So it, it's... For what is good take that brilliant bank it and then maybe think about okay can i reach for that could i work towards that lovely looking forward to read the book thanks Klaus. and this imperfection might be uh consoled by the old leonard cohen's anthem there is a crack in everything that is where the light gets in nice very good very good all right thanks so yeah Yes, I'm, I'm a little bit wondering about uh, such paths. So I know, I don't say a similar path, but uh, I, I know paths from companies who introduced uh, the de development journey for Scrum Masters at conferences. And they are somehow similar, let's say, they have uh, training workshops and so on, some theory, some practice, and so on, but my pain is, it's, it's really a pain. It's a role, it's a function in a company, yeah? And Scrum Master and Product Owner are totally new roles, yeah? But you don't have the background, you don't have the background from university or, or wherever. So as a software engineer, software developer, you, you go to university and study. You do that for years, and as Scrum Master, I or product owner, I have serious doubts uh, to do a mastery, let's say, on ten workshop days and some reflection and practice. Yeah. So, if I if I understood the 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 question correctly, is there concern that even the fact that I'm offering something more comprehensive than what's there at the moment. It's still too little to, to class as mastery. Yeah. And, and I, I can accept that. Um, and you know, I can I can make all kinds of excuses the fact, well, I'm just making a play on the words of my book, but no, I genuine it's not. You know, I I, I put I nailed my colours to the mast here and saying this is about looking for mastery. So what where does that definition of mastery come from? So it comes from the 60s, the 1960s. And it was around teaching and I've got, I've got kids that have gone through the school system and I've got another one that's just about to start and trying to speak to my kids over the years about what I do when I was a scrum master was quite difficult. Um, but when I, you know, basically they, they, what do you do daddy? Like, are you a fireman? No, you're not a fireman. Are you a doc no, I'm not a doctor. Um, what do you do? Well, I try and help people work out how to make their jobs better. That's what I do. And I said, okay, what kind of jobs? Well, any kind of jobs, really. It doesn't really matter. Um, so the way that we do that is through coaching. So yes, I am a teacher. But before I was a teacher, I was a coach. And I had to learn how to teach. I had to learn how to give presentations. I had to learn how to stand at the front. I had to learn how to create PowerPoints. I had to learn how to draw flip charts and all that kind of stuff that goes along with running a training course. But at heart, I'm still a coach. So when I'm stood in a classroom, there are certain things that I might be able to teach people as facts, rules, laws, not many, but I can teach them. And I actually quite often carry a physical hat around with me. And I'll say, when I'm giving you something that is fact, I will put this hat on. All right, this is the fact hat. But when the, when the hat is not on, the best that you can take from the words that are coming out of my mouth are Jeff's opinion. And I try not to give you my opinion before you formed your own. Because I know that it's very hard to shift 
an opinion once it's in your head. And so I try and coach as much as I can in the classroom without neglecting my responsibilities to give people rules, facts and laws when there are some. And this is effectively what, what Bloom was talking about when he was talking about teaching for mastery. He said, it's not about teaching people the answer. It's not even necessarily teaching them a process for finding the answer. It's teaching them a process to ask the right questions so that when they're in unfamiliar circumstances, they can apply tools, techniques, and a questioning curious approach to solve that problem. And a lot of my you know, approach to teaching has been empirical. This is why my, my books are full of stories. They're real stories. They've been changed slightly, but they're still real stories. And it's, not, it's never saying, this is what you should do. It's talking through the options that you, because you've always got options. And it's about making choices with incomplete information all the time. And, and if you don't have that confidence to be able to analyze the context, if you're just looking for a rule to apply, you're always either going to be beholden to an expert or a supposed expert or par paralyzed into inaction because you're worried about getting it wrong. So I, I fully, fully embrace your, your view of, do you know what, Jeff? People aren't going to be masters at the end of that. No, they won't, but they will be much, they will be on the path to mastery because they will have some knowledge and they will be able to apply that knowledge in real time with support and guidance and reflection. And after six months of reflecting on real scenarios where there was no right answer, they will have the thought process of how to analyze and make decisions best for themselves. That's, that's the, the biggest aim for this pathway for me. How does that sound? That was a genuine question back to you, Sylvia. Yes, um, maybe the question was, uh, are there universities uh, walking in a similar path? Well, I, I didn't observe that, yes, but my at university you should uh, learn to be critically reflective and, and so on, yeah? Mm. And I, I did not observe that, but maybe there, there are some studies. I don't know. Well, I'm going to bring Mentos in on this in a second because Mentos yes. has experience with universities. Um, yeah. I've been asked to do talks at universities. Um, but first, I, I'll, I'll tell you a brief story that it's one of those things that I'll always remember because it's one of those stories that made me laugh. Um, and it's a guy called Craig Larman, who you might be familiar with from, from the world of less and things like that um, and he was talking about medicine this was a long time ago so i might get the details wrong but the gist of it should be should be sound he's saying many many years ago people knew for a fact that when you were ill the cure was leeches they knew that it was a fact mm -hmm. okay and if you were really ill you needed lots of leeches even though science evolved antibiotics and all those types of things began to emerge and there were different ways of treating illnesses. Still, many, many people knew that leeches was the answer. And no matter how much evidence was put in front of them, they still clung to their view. And Lahman said it took for a whole generation of medical practitioners to die out before the new truth was fully accepted. Now, the reason I tell you that is because what I have seen, although I haven't seen what's being taught in universities, what I have seen is a shift in demographics in the boardroom. So I've seen more and more younger leaders getting into positions of influence and power who have seen things work differently and know different facts to their previous leaders. And it's been slow and it's been painful, but these people know that you can't carry on doing what we used to do and expect the same results because conditions are different. Now, whether that's a result of universities teaching it or whether they're learning it through what we call in England, the university of life, I don't know, <laughs> possibly a combination, but here's where I want to bring Mentos in because I'd be interested in his views. 
So, um, uh, Silvia, we, we have been in contact with uh, some universities for several years. So, for example, um, for 12 years now with University of Karlsruhe and also with uh, University of Neu-Ulm. And um, some, uh, you know, teaching at university is really in the hand of the professors in Germany. And it's really, if the professor loves something, it will happen. And if he doesn't, it will not happen. And so there are some professors that really understood Agile. And, and I, I, I also had them in training. Some of the professors of uh, University of Karlsruhe, they, they attended a training I, I gave in-house at the university. And so, um, and some didn't uh, understand it at all. So I, I regularly see um, um, worksheets where there are exercises or explanations, things like a backlog must be uh, fully understood and complete and, and whatever you write about classical requirements. So- Terrible, yes, I know. Yeah. And, I uh, but uh, I, um, there's one teacher in, at uh, University of Neu-Ulm and he is really into, um, I, I came there and I had a one day session with his students. And then he looked at me at the end and said, wow, you set a new standard for teaching at university. And I want to do this too. And so he switched into what we are doing with a, um, 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 a training from the back of the room and all these things. Uh, uh, he, he started changing every, uh, of course it's a step-by-step, step. he couldn't uh, just uh, the next day, but uh, he started switching everything and he invited other people also um, uh, from the uh, Agile community to visit him and his students and, and, to, and he's now, um, yeah, um, very, very deep. So it, it just depends. And we had from another university, um, we, we offered uh, at uh, University of, I don't remember, Nuremberg or Erlangen, we offered this uh, also uh, to them. And we got a nice answer, um, a not so nice answer, from, uh, uh, from uh, somebody who was responsible there. And he, she wrote to us and said, the student's time is so valuable, we can, cannot spend it on teaching this unimportant things about Scrum and Agile. We must teach them really important things about databases and whatever. So, yeah. There's still a long way to go. Yeah, I had your Scrum, ah, Dieter, yeah, nice. But I, I, I would also like to comment on uh, just a few points that uh, uh, Jeff just made. And uh, uh, first thing is uh, I, I dug up uh, a presentation uh, from 2012, so 10 years ago. Uh, and it, uh, it looks like this. Uh, I'm, I'm sharing my screen. It looks like this. It's a pass. Uh, and it's about Scrum Master. What, what skills does he need? So you start being a scrum teacher and you become a facilitator and, and some more things, it's a crazy. So there are some more things hidden in there um, and uh, near the top of the mountain, there's something like servant leader. Uh, so, uh, and it, it, this, um, it, there was something like a pass uh, to scrum mastery. Uh, we called it scrum master education program uh, about 10 years ago. Um, which uh, we, we, we created out of something, a feeling uh, when we were giving the two day CSM class. Um, I, I was uh, teaching two day CSM classes for several years with uh, Andy Schlieb. And, uh, and every time people left our course, I, was, I felt so sorry for them because we were offering those two days of training. And then we told them, the rest of your life you learn on your own. And so uh, what we did first was extending from two to three days. Uh, this is also, uh, and, and I'm still doing the three day uh, courses in order to cover um, uh, the, uh, uh, the um, things that you talked about earlier, Jeff, uh, where you said um, the CSM turned into basic scrum training. 
So I, the three days is for me is the first day I talk about basic scrum so that everybody is uh, at this, on the same level. And then the next two days, we are really talking about uh, CSM learning object, nowadays CSM learning objectives around uh, what's about teaching, coaching, um, uh, conflict navigation, uh, and all these things, uh, uh, mentoring, and so on, uh, really doing and, and these three days allows me to do the things that I like also beyond uh, the learning objectives. Um, this um, uh, image, what I showed you, uh, the, the past, it, it, it was 15 days. So um, we have Jeff's model with six and a half. We, have, um, we tried 15 days, so it was about six months and um, two and a half days in training, then four weeks with your team, as a scrum master, two and a half days in training and so on and so on. And we really ask people to come in being a scrum master. So at least being in the role of a scrum master so that they really could try out these things and come back with real questions. So half a day we always had, the first half day was always about reflecting what happened the last four weeks in your learning uh, um, thing. Uh, we stopped um, after, in, in 2017, we stopped doing this. So we, we did it about six years, uh, run 10 courses, so 10 groups of six people, um, but it was too hard to sell. I must frankly admit, and I'm, I'm really um, looking forward to your experiences around this, Jeff, whether or not um, six and a half days are easier to sell. Because what happened very often was people were very interested. They got their company. For example, I remember one lady from Bosch. She, she signed up. And then we had to tell her, sorry, we only have two people right now um, in the, at the intended time to start. So it's another three months later. And then at three months later, we had four people. And then we told them, it's another three months later. Sorry, four people is not a learning group. Six people is a learning group. And then we shifted um, uh, and, and in the end, there were about 10 trainers and coaches involved. And most of them, Klaus was also involved. Most of them, of course, we earned a little, little money, very little money. Um, most of them did it because they liked me. <laughs> they, they didn't do it for a living. They, it was just a hobby for them. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. So, um, and then Scrum Alliance approached us around uh, 2016 and they told us we want to buy it as an advanced uh, and uh, professional so what is, and and then at that point of time we said yeah we, we co-created it with 10 trainers and coaches from different companies and we can't sell it, it it's impossible um, the training materials is under um, um, open source license but we cannot sell it and and they I, I think in a way, they, Scrum Alliance also wanted us to train people to do this. Uh, but we re also refused this and Andy Schlieb came up uh, and maybe Jeff, you were involved in this also. Andy Schlieb came up with the idea and, and uh, said, Scrum Alliance, we can collaborate and it will take a year or one and a half years. We can collaborate on learning objectives and trying to get something. And very many of the learning objectives that we had in our 15 days, uh, um, six months program uh, are now part of the, um, 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 part of the uh, advanced CSM and uh, CSP uh, Scrum Master uh, certification. So some were stripped out and, and thrown away and others came fresh in. Of course, everybody was asked to contribute and to, um, we had several scrum gatherings where we discussed these things and uh, this was created and and when scrum alliance then said we have a new offering those uh, advanced certificates um, and uh, professional then uh, we stopped doing public trainings we would be ready if a company comes up and say we want to have an in-house training with these 15 days, we would be ready at any, it's on the shelf, I would be ready to do it at any time. And uh, I also support, strongly support uh, what Jeff Watts uh, um, earlier said uh, about have a closed learning group, this, the same people having the same learning experience. Uh, this is a very strong thing. And uh, have at least one, we, we thought, we, we, we said it was one head coach and head trainer who was always there 
and uh, the other uh, trainers and coaches were coming in and uh, adding their input uh, and their exercises and then but uh, they always had one person they could talk to at any day and night time uh, during this uh, learning experience so that's um, just what i wanted to add very cool very cool yeah. Are there any other questions? Yes, there is one question that was uh, sent directly to me. Uh, the question was sent directly to me and it's, uh, let me see, from Geta and she, it's a very large question. Uh, or I'm, I'm not sure how to answer it properly. Uh, curious to know the differences between the course offering from scrum.org, Scrum Alliance and the Scrum Mastery Pathway. Say that again, sorry. Curious to know the difference between the course offerings from scrum.org, from Scrum Alliance, and the Scrum Mastery Pathway. Um, so I can't I can't comment on the scrum.org because I don't I don't know them. Um, maybe I should go on them. But um, I do have a, a licensed guide who who's come through my train the trainer program who is also a scrum.org trainer. So he would be able to um, You'll be able to answer that better than me. The the Scrum Alliance ones, there, there's 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 definite overlap. You'd be surprised and I think disappointed if there wasn't. The so one of the big differences is that in the pathway you're expected to have a base knowledge of Scrum, whereas the Scrum Alliance gives you a base knowledge of Scrum um, through that. Um, there's no actual requirement for you to go past the CSM, hence the fact that there are over a million CSMs and only 16,000, I think, ACSMs. Whereas here, this is a commitment to not just get a base level of knowledge, but to, to keep going for six months, at least, with that group. Um, so that's kind of a... And I'll, I'll sort of link that to a couple of questions that, or not questions, but comments in the chat around you, you can't get mastery within six days and is it more of a horizon than a goal i think it is a goal and again coming back to that point of the definition of mastery being or one of the deaf part of the definition of mastery is being able to apply skills in unfamiliar contexts so mm -hmm. being able to take the idea of stakeholder facilitation and talk about it in one scenario but talk about it at a, at a high enough level that you would be able to apply that in different situations. Talk about keeping engagement and keeping ceremonies fresh, uh, about influencing or coaching up, as well as coaching your teammates or coaching other scrum masters, being able to take a skill and apply it in different contexts. That they will be able to call something that they have, certainly before the end of those six months so will they all be able to be dropped into any scrum team in any organization and change things straight away no would i probably not so um what are my expectations my expectations are they will have a greater understanding of themselves they will have a greater understanding of people that they work with they will have a greater understanding of how to apply skills and techniques in different circumstances without relying on a playbook. Uh, so that I'm not, yeah, I, I think that that's sort of, that's really helpful for me because I don't think I've ever said that before. Um, I find the question difficult uh, because there is not one offering from Scrum Alliance. Mm. The, um, of course, the Scrum Alliance is very strict around uh, the CSM offering, saying at least two days and, and so on and so on and so on. Um, but um, it's more the trainers or coaches offering around the advanced and um, um, professional step, because you can really tailor your approach, whatever you can. You can say, I'm doing a coaching thing, something that's uh, really is similar to what Jeff is offering. And I'm also doing this. I'm a, I'm a, a recognized coach and a recognized trainer by Scrum Alliance. So I'm doing both. 
I, I'm having three days uh, advanced classes uh, combined with some webinars uh, after so that they can reconnect and, and with a Slack group to um, so that they can later. Um, and I also um, offer one-on-one uh, -on -one learning journeys. So people approach me and uh, they uh, ask me, I, I want to become an advanced certified Scrum Master, but I don't want to attend a training. And then we, we set up whatever rhythm. So it's uh, every month, uh, a few hours, or um, every second, uh, or every third week, uh, a few hours where we come together and we work on situations um, that are real. So it's a real problem of the Scrum Master right now. And he's saying, oh, my team is falling apart. What can I do? And then we try to work on these things. And by working on these things, uh, we also start covering one learning objective after the other. And I, as a as a trainer or coach, I'm looking into as a Scrum Alliance a recognized trainer or coach. I'm I'm looking into that um, after um, nine months or twelve months, we cover all the learning objectives. It's a real, real, real yeah, one on one. And this is really so. There is not one. Um, there's not one offering from Scrum Alliance. And this is something Jeff also noted earlier. Uh, somebody, uh, a recognized trainer could do uh, what Jeff is offering, the pathway. And it might be that this also leads to the advanced level if, if you make sure that we cover all the learning objectives. It's a really good point, actually. And so the, I, I kind of, part of my early, well, I wouldn't say it was my positioning, but the, where I found myself positioned, if you like, was somewhere between Scrum Alliance and Scrum.org mm -hmm. in that the, one of the main differences between Scrum Alliance and Scrum.org, they're using the same Scrum guide, right, is that Scrum.org has a very central centralized curriculum um, and exam questions and things. And Scrum Alliance has learning objectives where people can create their own courses that could be very, very different. And so what I've, what I've landed on is kind of a combination of the two. So I have a core curriculum that has some flexibility around certain exercises that can be run in the workshops, but those coaching, those navigator sessions between the two workshops, they are deliberately intended to be pulled and reactive based on what the, the actual cohort need at that moment mm -hmm. in time, which is why the people who are coming through my train the trainer program, um, is, which is, not a phrase I like, but it's something that people recognize. And why I called them guides is because they're not just trainers. So these people, they have training experience, but they also have coaching experience. So they don't need to know an agenda to be able to help people. They don't need to know the answers to be able to help people. They do know a lot of answers to be able to teach people and they can help people find their own answers as they're going, as they're guiding them through. So it's somewhere in between that fixed curriculum and completely freeform curriculum, mm -hmm. somewhere in between the teaching and the coaching. And in my, in my blinkered and biased view of the world, it's the best of both worlds. In, in some of my trainings, when I really see a need there, so for example, I, I gave a training for, for Siemens um, just two, uh, two weeks ago, um, people are sometimes astonished because somebody, a participant, she said, I have this situation here and I don't know how to. And then I just said, OK, we put, a, we put the agenda to the side. And we make a case study around this. And now we, we spend, if everybody agrees here, then we spend an hour on looking into um, this situation. So please describe it. And everybody agreed. Uh, they were all from the same company and they, they were really looking into, ah, they have a problem in their part. So maybe this might also help us. And, and then we made a case study around this and, and a good learning. And in the end, I, as a trainer, want them to have a good learning experience and to make the next step uh, in there. Uh, if I skip one or two learning objectives, <clears throat> and I hope nobody from Scum Alliance will see this. Um, if I skip one or two or more learning objectives, I skip them. Bad luck. 
or good luck because uh, I, I created a room, a space uh, for better learning for those people. Yeah. What the yeah. heck, I'm, I'm not following any, so I, I, I don't create, create any slides. I, I, it, my my very first uh, Scrum training, I was so insecure. So I needed those 100 slides to, to walk through from one slide to the other. But now you can give me any topic, give me a word, and I, I will just create a flip chart or whatever and, and try to give you a frame for thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, um, I, I don't want to bore people with my, with my sort of journey, but you know, the, the, advanced, the advanced CSM class that, that sort of evolved massively over the years. And since oh, the most recent, instance of it involved a loose structure but actually even before people signed up they were they were in the full knowledge that we would not cover all of the learning objectives in the classroom and Paul and I Paul Goddard and I would be quite very very open about that and we would still cover the learning objectives but we wouldn't cover them all in the classroom and this was, this was because we thought yeah some learning objectives were more important than others to go into more detail and also some learning objectives would be more important for the people in the room mm -hmm. so we would if you, if you were going to come on one of our acsm classes there would be pre-work to cover off some of the learning objectives and we would go through the bulk of the learning objectives but we couldn't guarantee which ones in the class and whichever ones we didn't go through in the class we would go through afterwards and and that Again, is is kind of. I, I I think that's I think I think that's just a good classroom focus. I think it's putting the student first. Uh, that's why we added uh, to the advanced courses and the professional courses. We added two do two webinars, so they they have to attend. And other otherwise, we as trainers will not say you've done it. Um, so they have to attend uh, two webinars and these webinars allows me to to check up something or we missed on something important around uh, servant leadership uh, there's a learning objective about this and then i cover this topic uh, in such a webinar um, 14 days after the training also and um, and this was one way to trying to deal with uh, and we experimented around um, uh, ideas around this with course pre-work i've had good and bad experience. The worst experiences with pre-work is uh, in with in-house trainings. Mm. Very often people just show up. So in the first five minutes, what's, what, what is this training about? And, and then I say, yes, <laughs> and you had compulsory and uh, pre-work to do. Uh, otherwise I would, yeah, I, I have not been so strict. Uh, I've not thrown anybody out of the course. Andy Schlieb did this uh, once or twice. He told me, you really threw somebody out of the course and say, you have not prepared properly. You will uh, disturb the learning experience of the other people. So out of the door and you can be, of course, we are offering the same next month. You can be back next month. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, well, I mean, there was a time when, um, this was a long time ago, but I was, I was proud of the fact that over a period of time, I can't remember what it was, let's say nine months, I think on average, 20% of the people in my CSM classes were refused certification. Uh, either because they were, oh, I've just got this meeting at lunchtime. It's only three hours. Um, is that fine? There's a very low bar here. You just have to basically turn up no scrum and generally leave me with a positive impression of you as a human being and and you can be a csm right but you've actually got to be here all right i can't necessarily tell in these two days whether you understand it and whether you're remembering it but you've at very least got to be here so no um and when you've got people who are turning up and just want to disrupt other people then they need to leave and uh, so it it's been a long time but yeah i think that that view that all you needed to do was 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 turn up has not helped 
in some regard. And I know it's it's a false uh, it's a false accusation in many cases, um, but it's it's one that's sort of stuck unfortunately over the years. Yeah, that's usually something I talk about in the early minutes of the course uh, when I really look into the eyes of the participants uh, as good as you can do it remotely uh, or when you're in the room and uh, and ask them who is responsible that you're learning something and uh, nowadays normally they just mm -hmm. okay I, I, i'm responsible and then i say yes that's the right answer so you can be sitting in here three days and learn nothing so it's your please take notes at the appropriate moment um, engage uh, and I will uh, make sure you have a proper learning environment so that this is possible. Mm. Yeah. Well, I see that as role modeling what you're teaching, right? Yes, of yeah. course. So yeah, it, we're, treating, we're treating developers, we're treating leaders, we're treating product owners, we're treating people who work as adults. We are assuming that all things being equal, they want the best for themselves. They want to be successful. So if they're being disruptive, if they're being dysfunctional, then there's something else going on that's stopping them from being at their best. They have a need that's not being met somehow. Uh, so how can I create a, uh, you know, a learning environment where they can yeah. do what is natural for them, which is get as much as they can from it? And it, 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 but this changes a bit uh, the, in the CSM class, you get more of this behavior, uh, the advanced and professional I in in my experience, everybody who's attending is really, I want to learn this, I want to learn this and uh, this might be related to you are really asked to have a year of experience before you become or two years of experience become your advanced uh, professional um, level and uh, so when you really worked started working as a scrum master and really struggled and you you have the experience the csm is not enough then you're really longing for uh, i need some support some for, for the next step uh, mm. if you don't get it from a community of practice of scrum masters in your company or so no, I, I absolutely agree. And I don't want people to have to wait for that moment to arrive before thinking, oh, I wonder if there's something else out there that I can, yeah. that I can get. I want it built in from the start uh, because no matter how good you are, there is so much unpredictability and people are complex. You're going to be working with people. The environments you're in are complex. The world is complex. It's, it's, the role itself is deliberately ambiguous and vague. Mm -hmm. So having to figure things out in real time with just you know, a couple of days worth of training and no extra support going on, it's just really, really hard for people. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think, what was I gonna say? I think the, a lot of the, yeah, a lot of the, let's see, yeah, that's what, it's a, what I have found and this is something I, I remember coming back and saying to my wife after running the first one of these formal pathways for a client was that every single person in that room was really focused on their career. Yeah. There were 15 people who all really wanted to become really, really good at product management. There were no prisoners. There were no tourists. Mm -hmm. There were no, there were a couple of business analysts, I think, who, who probably had much, much more on their plate than their job description meant they should have. And, you know, really wanted to get better. And it was such a positive experience, uh, even more so than, like I said, the advanced classes who kind of feel that, all right, this is the next step, or I'm doing this because I need to be able to get a CSP so that I can get a CST or whatever. There are, there are lots of other reasons that people have attended advanced classes in my experience, rather than just for the personal and professional development. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the one thing I've, well, one of the things that I've really, really noticed. Mm -hmm. I, it, what you just told, uh, uh, it triggered um, something I remember now. Um, 
I think it was the second time that we were running the, uh, the 15 days uh, thing. And uh, in the second course, somebody from uh, a company here from Baden-Baden uh, joined us and he came into the room and said, I know all these things. I'm just here to assess your training and to tell my organization whether or not it's good or not. And after the first uh, two and a half days, he said, oh, oh, oh I'm learning something here. And uh, after uh, the 15 days, after half a year, he came to me and said, it was a life changing experience. That's cool. And, and, this, and the same organization told us, and, and that this might be true for what you're doing also, uh, Jeff, uh, the same organization told us, we were thinking we were developing uh, a single person, but we found out we were not developing a single person. We were developing a whole scrum team, a product owner and a product. This all changed to the better. We could see it. HR mm. could see how all these things uh, became better. Sorry, Dieter, you, you have your hand up for some time now. Yes, uh, when, I, when I hear all this, this uh, I think you can be very lucky to have people uh, in your courses who are so focused and so motivated to learn for themselves. Uh, I just showed the box from Edu Scrum uh, just behind me. I try to do the same in school classes and try to motivate uh, Ch children in this in school uh, to learn uh, and self-organize and all this in this way of scrum but if you ask them why are you learning this you will get just another quite another answer i'm I learning it for i'm learning it for the next test in two weeks right i think and, that's that's key Dieter. i think you, you've hit on a really important point there first of all why do yeah. people know why they're learning yeah. and can they attach that to their own personal motivations? Yes. Now I can't speak for German students as in German children. Um, but from my experience of, of teenagers in general, one of the biggest things they have in the classroom is their appearance. So I don't want to, to look like I'm learning. I don't want to look like I'm the teacher's favorite. I don't want to look clever. All right. Uh, and equally, I don't want to look silly or weak in front of my, my peers. And I don't think that's really any different to the corporate world. Most people in the classroom have a fear. They have a fear that they're going to look silly, that they might have to admit that they should have known this before, that if they don't get it now, that someone else will. They might be picked upon to present and they don't like present. There are lots of fears in a classroom. Um, and it could be that it, their fear is going to be an argument and their natural response is, well, I think they're going to try and make me look silly. I'm going to be argumentative. I'm going to get whatever the driver is for that behavior. It's blocking their learning. But all things being equal, if you if you gave everyone a chance of if you ask them the question, if, the, if everything else was a, a non factor, would you like to have more knowledge and wisdom in your head tomorrow than today? most people if not all of them would say yes it's a question of them finding out what those personal barriers are to them having an effective learning environment and it might be different for children than adults it might be quite similar but when we're talking about barriers i've actually got a question for you lot which is if you were to consider going back to whoever it is in your organization that that makes decisions around things like training and development and coaching and so on. And to say, do you know what? There's something a little bit different out there. And you told them about this pathway. I'd be really interested in what you think the barriers that they would see to this type of approach being from their perspective. Um, oh, sorry, can I just start speaking? Yes, yes. Sure. Um, one thing I could think of is, uh, for example, the organization where I heard this question when I mentioned this um, pathway was, they are so used to going on the scrum.org, the whole, uh, it's, 
it's almost like the machines are all sort of geared and set up and going in that direction. And um, it's another matter that um, um, really not sure if I can say this in a call with 50 people in it, but quality scrum masters and um, how much I feel for that lack of quality scrum masters. And I see the value in what you say about the six month uh, program and bringing the real why of being a scrum master into it rather than it just being a certificate. Um, so one barrier for me that comes right off um, to mind is the ease with which they have set up the scrum.org routine. Mm -hmm. and they've got providers in place already and at multiple levels. And it's like multiple gears moving in multiple levels that are already set up in a particular way. Yeah, so mm -hmm. habit yes. and yeah. also structures where they've got a preferred supplier list or something like that, yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But, but I think it's also a lack, lack, lack of understanding of the whole thing. So yeah. the people who decide, oh, let's do a training for the company. These mm -hmm. are the guys who should know this. And they don't. Uh, that's the basic. We are, maybe we have to wait for another generation of HR people. <laughs> I don't know. So they, you, know, you need to have that mindset or understanding uh, people who are deciding on these issues. Yeah, I've, I, I mean, I hope, hope we don't have to wait for another generation uh, because generally people in HR are younger than me, so I'll be dead by then. Um, but the, what you have said there brings something important to mind. I used to put something for, for my courses on the website, which is you know, if you're trying to convince somebody at, at work to pay for this, here's a one pager with you know, the core information. What, what can you expect me to get from this? You know, what's involved? What are the, and almost some you know, questions of uh, frequently asked questions that perhaps give into HR or the people who have got the preferred suppliers list or something. Um, having that to hand might might be quite useful. So thank you. You've already given me ideas as a as a product owner for this. So any other constraints or barriers that you can see? So one barrier I can see and also experience in my for, uh, uh, companies before. Um, was that the need of a scrum master was not really um, seen in the company. So the product owners, okay, I changed all my project leads to product owners and they are important because they um, are important for the product. But what about the scrum masters? Um, where do I get them from and why should I... Um, uh, put money into them <laughs> and then of course when I come then as a new scrum master I was on a CSM course for example and say I do need more um, advice more training more stuff and now look here this costs you this and then they say like okay but what do I get out of it because you are not developing something and you are not in charge of the product and that is something that um, was a barrier in my um, former uh, uh, companies where I worked that they do not see the scrum master as that valuable than the that's other a, roles. That's a really good point. Yeah. Thank you. Hmm. Klaus? Yeah, it's, I, I go pretty much along the same line that if people who cannot really tell the difference of something which is high quality, thoroughly reflected, lots of experience, practical and theoretical, et cetera, et cetera, from whatever might be a low quality, you know, a discount version of a Scrum Master, if they can't tell the difference, why should they invest in five, seven, eight, 15 days, if you can have the same, the, the, the apparently same thing with mm. two days or no days and just the exam in the beginning. And, and then I wondered, could you take a staggered approach? I, I'm about to finish a three year curriculum in a therapeutic uh, school and it started off with an agreement just for the first year and after year one both sides were free to reassess would we like to continue together mm -hmm. uh, this could be scaled down to something maybe so you start off with with something with a lower threshold but making clear it will have a lower result mm -hmm. but you will better be able to judge on the difference after the first step so yeah 
kind of prototyping approach to the thing itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome. So, Jeff, just to understand, your offering, it's it's a one or nothing. It's all or nothing. You have to do the whole path or, or can you just do, oh, do step one and then maybe step two? Yeah, it's it's a it's a product. It's a thing. Yeah, and that, that's that's difficult maybe for people that don't understand this. So if you start, maybe you can as as uh, um, I think it was Klaus Klaus who suggested. Well, make it incremental, like to the first one, and if they see value, somehow split this. It would be definitely easier to sell. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sell the seeds first, and then the fertilizer, and then the water, and you know, and then the harvest. Kisa, your hand is up. Thank you. Um, more than um, sharing about the barrier, I just wanted to share a tiny little thing that I've started to do recently in this big machine of an organization where there are multiple levels. Um, as an agile coach, I work within my pocket, within my engagement to create awareness as to the need for Scrum Masters and um, also bring to light the pain points which could have been addressed if we had Scrum Masters. This is also, I um, relate to what you said there, Stephanie, about um, um, uh, need for scrum masters why should we invest in them and why do we need them i'm facing similar questions um, and scrum master is not a hired role and uh, we need a delivery lead not a scrum master so those kind of questions and those kind of realizations are or not realizing mm. this is not a direct sort of solution for you jeff and uh, but then what i can do for where i am standing is to start slowly create awareness as an agile coach as to the potential that a scrum master brings and to also help the product owners themselves realize what a valuable uh, partnership they can have with the scrum master yeah thank you misha you have a question oh just uh, let's have a, a three-step answer to your uh, question uh, jeff um the first step would be I don't know who did it, but uh, it was a brilliant disservice naming the role Scrum Master. Because telling everybody this is a master, so, okay, he's a master. After two days course, after any kind of certification, so what should come more? My second uh, point about it, we know there are some cargo cults and those companies and enterprises they are fairly certified with a two-day certi certified scrum master and they love it overruling them and steering the teams and coordinating all the stuff via any kind of leads or managers and the third part of my answer coming back to the mastery Those people who decide and um, you also want to talk to as a product owner, are they, are they on their mastery journey? I think that's quite rare in our world. Having, having purpose, having, having motivation, uh, striving every day being better. And this is perhaps also what we can see as Scrum Masters in, in, in the difference in the percentage of how many Scrum Masters do we have and how many advanced and how many professionals do we have. And I think this verteilung um, of English. Distribution. This distribution can be also seen in HR, in procurement, and even on CEO level. I assume, just my opinion. Thanks for listening. Cool, thank you. Peter, you also have something to add. Um, just, just a short, um, different uh, perspective, different angle I want to offer. Um, like if, if you go to a um, larger organization and they probably um, 
are in a process or finished process to create lots of scrum teams. Um, how do they know if they need your pathway to Scrum Master training for, for uh, the Scrum Master? If they need your pathway to a team member, your pathway to product owner, especially when you offer all three of them, why don't we offer pathway to better product teams? Uh, well, not, not team member, uh, including the product owner and the Scrum Master uh, to give everyone the chance to see how these three roles and work together, how to make a product more successful. Yes, no one did it uh, in the past, I guess. So you probably tried it when you uh, coached uh, in companies. But um, so my question is, why didn't come a pathway out of that? Um, why do you still go back to these three different roles and no one knows what to order from you? Mm -hmm. May I quickly, and, and then Jeff, um, um, quickly, Peter, this pathway exists. It, it's called Agile Coaching, if it's done well. So I have just next to me uh, the Agile Coaching definition. Agile Coaching is a, um, an experience journey with people in a thought-provoking and creative journey using coaching approaches with an Agile mindset and principles to help individuals, teams, and organizations to be the best they can be. Yes, yes, I do understand, but- it, it, um, The process it, it, for, for the whole team on, on whatever they are working on. This is just my quick answer and then now Jeff. No, I try. coach mentors is the person who goes there and helps uh, the teams, which is what Jeff, from my understanding, did in the past to several teams very successful. The point is, um, do organizations know that they have to invest in coaching or is the pathway to a successful product team probably a better sales pitch, uh, especially as uh, Jeff has all these in already created all these courses. Yeah, uh, it's, I, I really like where you're going with that, Peter. I really do. Um, I've, whenever I, I had the chance in the past to run either role specific workshops or holistic workshops for the whole team i would generally pick the holistic workshop because i would rather people learn together at the same time the same things because you know one thing i learned as well as you know, i said i had to learn how to be a trainer um don't don't for one minute think you know i'm the finished article i know that i can stand up and say exactly the same words in exactly the same way and two groups and two individuals can hear them very differently. But if you've got those people in the same room together, they can have that discussion about their different interpretations. And I'm not gonna say everything works out brilliantly, but it's a lot better than having people leave with two different sets of truth. Uh, Jeff said this, oh, Jeff said that. Well, I don't know, I was in the same room and he didn't actually say that. So I, I do like that. Is it marketable as a product? So one of the reasons why role specific courses and pathways and programs have proliferated over holistic ones is that it's much easier to, to sell a public version of a course where any scrum master from any organization, any country in the world can come along. Getting the whole team to attend something together is quite difficult. Uh, it's not impossible, but it's certainly more logistically challenging. And most people, me included, will generally take the easier approach than the harder one, because there are so many barriers that we have to get past. Just getting rid of one more barrier is a lot easier. Uh, so that's why I think it hasn't taken off. Would I still encourage it? Well, what I would typically do, and I'll, I'll jump on to what Mentos has kind of hinted at there is, what I have seen work in practice with this pathway approach is so at an organization where one group of product owners is going down their product mastery pathway they're learning about being product owners they've got different teams they're working with we've got scrum masters over there is those those inter to the workshops between the two sort of actually training elements that's an opportunity where we will get people together and have group coaching okay 
And part of their homework perhaps will be where they're going through in their communities and they're talking and they're trying things out in between sessions and they're reflecting on them before they come back to the next coaching session will be to actually do some work with their teams and, and, and have conversations and try to different things out. So it would be, it would be rare that if, if I engaged with a group of product owners at an organization or a group of scrum masters at an organization for six months, that we didn't interact with other members of their teams or other members of their organizations. It's not necessarily selling it as a packaged product, but it is a conversation that I do tend to have um, just in a slightly different way, I think. Does this answer your question, Peter? Yeah, so basically you're doing it in a way and um, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, great question. It, 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 just, it just triggered one, one, one other idea. Um, when a company approaches us um, and they say, we have a new product where we, um, we want to start a new product and it needs to be a success. So we want to do it with Scrum. And then we say, ah, okay, do you know anything about Scrum? No. Then uh, what, what I do then, okay, please let's together identify a group of developers, preferably some, some people that are volunteers, uh, 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 they want to work on this product. And then uh, let's identify uh, um, somebody uh, uh, which we will call product owner. And then now let's identify somebody who we call Scrum Master. And, and then we embark on, and, and they, they ask, what do we need? I, I uh, um, very often I say, let's have a kickoff. We have a two days kickoff and it's a, it's a mix of getting the product vision right and the backlog and uh, whatever um, uh, the definition of done and, and all these things in the two days and, it's, and uh, uh, some scrum training. So it's a mix of both. So, and we embark together on this journey and then I will be at their side as long as they want me to be at their side or, um, or Stephanie or whoever from Emendare. And this is a common approach that many people, I, I think Jeff has done the same. We will be at their side together in this learning journey. And I will learn about the organization, their needs and whatever um, wrong assumption I had. Um, and, and they will learn together and they grow in their roles. So uh, I, I prefer to have all these roles um, all these uh, accountabilities set there. So I, I, I'd i rather not, if, if it's possible, be the scrum master in this setup so that they can learn how to interact and, and then fly on their own. And this is something like the, uh, the pathway to, um, for me, it's something like that. And it, it's very intense for, for some teams. We do this um, just a few weeks. And other teams, uh, we've been doing this uh, recently, uh, also during the pandemic. I, I remember one customer where, where I was re really involved with the team for uh, one and a half years. And then somebody else from our organization took over. Very cool. Peter again. Hey, may I just ask a short question on that? Um, so do you have a name, a, a product name for this? mentors for this uh, yeah support you're giving um yeah i'm, I'm the, the, I, I i would say the the name is agile coaching but i i offer what what we are selling the company is um as a kickoff two days kickoff and then um as much support as you uh, need from an agile coach to move forward and this could be eight hours a day. It could also be uh, once a week, or it could be three hours every day and, and whatever, or um, um, in the first sprints more and, and then less. But yeah, um, I, I don't know. I, I can't remember when, whether or not we put a, a product name to it. Maybe it's something like getting your team started up or whatever. It could be that we created such a flyer a few years ago, but I, I don't remember. Tim. Yeah, muted. Oh, I just try to unmute. My question goes to Jeff. I'm uh, just, uh, as I'm just one of these product nerds here in the group, uh, and I'm yeah totally like your product mastery book as well. So I was um, 
you're happy to hear that you also plan to offer a product master a product mastery pathway as understood correctly and what you said and what i really like is that you said you want to discover now and test your product or get feedback for the product so as understood correctly firsthand for the scrum mastery pathway but beside perhaps also for the product mastery pathway i see on the website so what's your hypothesis regarding these differentiations of both products so what's your hypothesis perhaps in kind of in, um, question of share or multiplication between scrum mastery and product mastery how do you see the shares in the let's say market or how do you uh, assume uh the the um yeah the interest uh interesting uh, or interest from the market oh that's an interesting one uh wasn't actually where i thought you were going to go with that question interestingly enough um I don't have a hypothesis about the proportion of market interest. Um, and it actually doesn't bother me too much what it turns out to be. I don't really think that's that important for me um, because I, I, I'm equally, I equally enjoy running them both. And I, equally, I think they're both equally important in their own way. Um, I have noticed over the last, I'll say, four years that there's been a higher proportion of inquiries to me and I would say the group of agile coaches that I generally speak more to that there's been more product owner inquiries than scrum master inquiries now whether that's because the scrum master market was tapped into first and sort of reached saturation whether it's a combination of uh, the fact that, as I think Gita said, or, or, or a couple of people have said, maybe the organizations aren't seeing as much value in a full-time Scrum Master role when they are seeing more value in the product owner role. I don't know. Um, it could be a combination of all of those things. But where I thought you were going with this question around hypotheses was how I'm effectively measuring success. Um, and, and my personal measure of success is taking people who already inquire with me or come to me and ask for work because I've got 20 years worth of data on you know, how many people who come to me actually end up that turning into work, uh, comparing that data to when I say, well, no, I'm not offering what you actually came to me for. I'm offering something different. And how many people see the offering that I'm putting forward, not just as valuable, but valuable enough for them to take a different path. Uh, my hypothesis is that it would be less than 50%. I think mm -hmm. it's probably going to be around the 25%. Mm -hmm. um, but I would be happy with 25%. Um, so I think over time, well, one of the things that I said when I started this was, you know, I, I would love it if Scrum Alliance, Scrum.org, other places looked at what was happening here and thought, yeah, yeah, maybe we do need to do something to encourage a less transactional approach from companies to the offerings that we have through our trainers and coaches. Maybe a more partner collaborative long-term approach is something that we should try and encourage maybe we should put more emphasis on helping people find their own motivators for following the path to csp for example um, that would be great thanks very interesting let me add perhaps did you get any reaction from scrum alliance or scrum.org uh, on your linkedin post or on the thing itself not no i didn't um and it doesn't surprise me uh, because the scrum alliance doesn't have a leader at the moment um the previous leader of the scrum alliance yeah, I saw commented how on it. Was. yeah yeah i saw it yeah um but there is no current leader so that doesn't surprise me they got bigger problems to to worry about than little old me um uh, but no nothing nothing from scrum.org either thank you Dita. thanks a lot yeah, I have a, a question too. Um, 
in the early days, uh, we have these uh, project managers or product leaders, and there was one person who organized it all. And now we have a scrum master and also there, and then we have a product owner. Someone has to know what we have to do. And then we have a scrum master jumping around, hanging around half the time. Uh, a scrum master job can't be a full-time job. What is he doing the whole day? Yeah? What do you think about that to say, uh, why didn't the Scrum Master uh, also work uh, as a member of the team? Mm. Or why does the Scrum Master not uh, do a second and a third team? What, what's your view on that? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a big view that I have that has multiple different aspects to it. I'll try, and, I'll try and keep it simple. I think any job, if you want it to be done really, really well, you should focus on it. Uh, I think especially a job as ambiguous and as disempowered from an official perspective, they don't have official power, um, yet as demanding as team facilitated, team catalyst, organizational change agent, and other things. Having, having that as just part of your role means that human nature will dictate I pick the parts of the role because I can't do it all, but I will pick the parts that I find more enjoyable or at least less stressful. And those are the things that probably need to be focused on more. So that's one part of it. The other side is that I actually have seen Scrum Masters be really, really effective with multiple teams. But without question, those people have got to that point by being focused on one role for one team. They don't start off doing multiple roles or with multiple teams. They get really good at their role. They get really good at the organization. They get really good with the relationships. And then the team becomes more self-managing. We've built up this idea of servant leadership within the organization. People are more capable, they're more comfortable, they're more safe. They don't need the full-time support and facilitation and coach. Um, so it's, you know, I've always said your, re your aim as a scrum master should be to do yourself out of a job. All right. Before you get to that point, there will be a time when you aren't needed full-time. This is fantastic. What do you do with that? Help more people. So, so I, I agree totally, and I say uh, I, I, I was out the same, and, and I said, no, I want to become a professional in one role, mm -hmm. so let me be a professional scrum master and not be the best programmer uh, in the same time, I, I can't do that. And uh, a colleague of mine said, okay, if you're a good scrum master, maybe you can do, you can handle two or three teams at the same time, but if you are really good, You can only handle one team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I give credit to Mike James, who was a scrum certified scrum trainer as well. I think he still is um, from the yes. West Coast of the US. Um, uh, he always teases me for writing the book that he wanted to write because he was the first person that I heard say a good scrum master can cope with three teams, but a great scrum master focuses on one. Um, and that's you know, one of the, one of the big, light bulb moments for me as a scrum master, as a, as a coach, as a writer myself, and thinking, yeah, it's kind of one of those almost paradoxical things. And it's, yeah, there's a lot of truth in that. I, um, I sent a link to, uh, to the chat, uh, um, an article, a day in the life of a scrum master, and it's giving the, my answer to this. Uh, with a picture I usually use in training, and uh, I will not elaborate. You you can mm -hmm. you can read it and um, yeah. No, There's a German translation of it uh, on the uh, Scrum uh, chapter web page. Nice, cool. I just wanted to uh, 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 very short uh, refer to something uh, you said earlier uh, about. Um, um, 
what what's our intention when we uh, when we are offering a coaching or training when his mentors or jeff is doing something our intention and i i, I try to speak for jeff our intention is to make people successful we we want to see people being successful we want to see people grow we want to see we have fun when we see people being uh, the best they can be we just have fun with this and this is really and and of course when you when you look at all of the scrum trainers uh, that i know there are some with the same intention and there are some with other intentions so um when when the advanced and professional um level were announced in uh, 2017 2016 or 17 what some of the first statements were we cannot sell this and i cannot i cannot uh, go into uh, doing something advanced because it's six uh, it's uh, three weeks to christmas and three weeks to christmas means i have six trainings to go two each week back to back and um, and this is something I would never do. And uh, because it, it, this is not about letting people grow. It's just about uh, carving out as much money as you can get and then um, forget about it. So let them fail, whatever. It's not my fault. It's not my problem. It's not my, um, your organization bought uh, the course. They paid me and uh, I'm done with it. And this is not uh, something uh, that I, endorse if people want to be supported and and that's why uh, i also collaborate with others uh, not only in emendare uh, we are 12 people at emendare so if a customer approaches us and asks us for help uh, and uh, then i can say yeah sorry i'm fully booked but my colleague uh, might be uh, um, able to help and if this is not possible because all the colleagues are fully booked then I'm happy to pass on whatever. Um, normally, I look into you're coming from Cologne, so your company is sitting in Cologne. So I find a trainer or coach in Cologne, or you're coming from Hamburg. I find a trainer or coach in Hamburg, and and uh, we just pass uh, it on to somebody else because we really want to. This transforming the world of work of the Scrum Alliance uh, is something that is uh, dear to me. In a way of creating a better environment and uh, where people can succeed have fun at the places where and have a healthy environment when they are at work these are all and, and now we have many discussions around sustainability uh, this is also something i fully support that's a nice way to to finish it mentors i was um, also asking if you want to add something job no i'm just amazed that people are still here an hour and 45 minutes later it's I mean, Zoom fatigue is, is real, and with temperatures as they are, I, I, I can't understand how some of you haven't passed out. So, uh, yeah, I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate your feedback. Um, as a product owner, that's really, really useful. If you have any more feedback, if you do have conversations with people and you get some real first-hand feedback about it, uh, or anything that would you think would be useful for me to know, I'd, I'd, I'd welcome, welcome that input. Um, and, yeah, reach out. Let me know how things are going. Thank you for coming. Thank, thank, thank you. you for hosting. Yeah, thank you, Jeff, for uh, joining us uh, here. Um, thank uh, you. With the Germans. <laughs> Guten Tag. Tschüss. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> ciao, ciao. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao. ciao. Thank you. Bye. bye. Auf Wiedersehen. I have a question. It's totally off topic. Yes, totally. And it might sound really stupid. I was not, I'm still not sure if his name is pronounced Geoff or Jeff or Joff. Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. It's just Jeff. Jeff. Oh, so that's a, just a cool way to write the name then. <laughs> yes. Okay. One last question. So I really, I really like that discussion. Yeah, and I, I maybe one of the uh, re little gems that I'm taking uh, with me is is his definition or his view on 
uh, which is not a new one, right? So, but this his view, his take on uh, being a single one focused uh, Scrum master, not being like a Scrum master uh, multi server, right? If you want to be really focused and really good, you have to be try to be a one. <laughs> And then if you're really good and maybe your teams are, they can support this, then you can um, work with multiple teams. Yeah, that's always uh, the same thing that I uh, also teach in. And it's complicated sometimes to teach that uh, because it sounds uh, contradictory, right? Uh, it sounds difficult uh, for, for the context of the companies. What, one guy all the time? And in the new Scrum Guide, it's not really clear about that. Yes, yeah. also it's really ambiguous. Yeah. Inzwischen ist der Scrum Guide ähm, da nicht mehr so ganz klar. In früheren Versionen war das jetzt nicht mehr. Jetzt sagt er irgendwie. Yeah. Aber diese, äh, der Wechsel zu den Accountabilities ist vor allen Dingen äh, für sehr kleine Teams gedacht gewesen. Also äh, wenn du ein Startup gründest mit irgendwie yeah. fünf Leuten, dass du dann sagst, wir können auch Scrum einsetzen. Ähm, und äh, sind nicht dazu gezwungen, äh, zwei Leute quasi als Product Owner und ähm, ja, macht auch der Master vollkommen aus dem Sinn. Development rauszuziehen. Aber genau. Ja, macht also auch vollkommen Sinn. Sinn. Also du wirst jetzt nicht, äh, wenn du einfach keine Möglichkeiten hast, dann hast du die, dann hast du die Möglichkeit, ja gut, einer übernimmt was, ist besser als, <lacht> als gar nicht. Ja. Also, also macht was, Sinn. Ich, was ich normalerweise im Training sage, das hängt so ein bisschen ab von deiner Liga der du spielen willst. Also wenn wir ja. jetzt Fußball als Metapher nehmen, ähm, also es würde überhaupt, es ist überhaupt keine Frage, dass Bayern München oder Manchester United einen Trainer hat und dass dieser Trainer nicht gleichzeitig auch Dortmund trainiert. Das ist ja, ja. völlig klar. Also wenn du aber Kreisliga spielst, dann kann das passieren, dass ein Trainer sowohl die Mannschaft aus dem einen Vorort als auch aus dem anderen Vorort trainiert oder dass der, dass der Trainer vielleicht sogar noch mitspielt. Also so ein Trainerspieler, also der spielt dann halt mit, aber dann fehlt ihm halt die ganze Distanz. Also wie soll ich denn moderieren, ja. facilitieren, wenn ich Teil des Spiels bin? Und das ist, äh, das ist elementar wichtig. Ich habe dieses Bild in dem Artikel, den ich äh, da noch gepostet habe, äh, A Day in the Life of a Scrum Master, ja. dieses Bild habe ich einmal erfunden im Gespräch mit einem Bereichsleiter. Der sagt nämlich auch zu mir, ähm, jetzt ähm, haben meine Leute das ja kapiert und dein Vertrag läuft jetzt aus, also hören wir auf, wir brauchen jetzt keinen Scrum Master mehr. Und dann habe ich ihm dieses Bild hingemalt und ihm erklärt, guck mal, was die Aufgaben des Scrum Masters ist. Und dann hat dieser Bereichsleiter, ähm, Christian hieß der, hat dann das Bild angeguckt, hat da zwei Minuten drüber nachgedacht, Stille im Raum, also nur er und ich waren da, ich hatte ihn um 30 Minuten Zeit gebeten dafür. Und, und dann guckt er mich an und sagt, wenn das du willst mir sagen, der Scrum Master ist eine Führungskraft. Ich habe gesagt, ja, genau. Der Scrum Master ist eine Führungskraft. Dann hat er gesagt, ich will, dass alle meine Führungskräfte diese Dinge können. Und hier eben gerade noch, wo er sagte, es gibt keinen Scrum Master mehr, sagt er, fünf Minuten später, nach diesem Bild, sagt er, und hier sind 25.000 Euro, ich möchte, dass du diese Person aus meiner Organisation ausbildest. Mach das. Hm. Ja, ja, macht auch Sinn, was er gesagt hat. Ne? Also eigentlich sollten alle das können. Das, das wäre toll in einem Team, wenn wirklich, also genau. zum Beispiel auch die, warum soll eigentlich nur das Scrum Master jetzt Facilitation machen? Er hat es, er hat es auf seinen Führungskräfte, also ja, ja, ja. Hat Führungskräfteverhalten vor Augen gesehen und hat gesagt, also als Coach, Mentor, Conduct of Collaboration, Konfliktnavigation, Moderation, ja. Lehrer, Change Agent, alle Führungskräfte möchte ich, dass die so agieren. Aber du hast natürlich recht, es ist noch eine viel schönere Organisation und da hat gerade heute Morgen ähm, hat äh, äh, mein Kollege Armin ähm, zusammen mit der Ute bei einer ganz coolen Organisation angefangen zu arbeiten. Ähm, ich kann leider den Namen jetzt nicht sagen, aber äh, da, da das ist ein Team auf uns zugekommen und hat gesagt, ähm, wir, wir sind schon ganz gut eigentlich, aber wir wollen irgendwie, wir, wir brauchen noch ein bisschen und die sind total offen, die äh, die sind schon auf einem wirklich guten Niveau, was ihr Produkt und, der, und auch in der Zusammenarbeit, aber die, die fragen einfach, hey Leute, wenn ihr irgendeine Idee habt, dann lasst uns mal einen Lernweg gehen zusammen. Und der Armin hat heute Morgen dann auch gesagt, nach der ersten Session, er ist total geflasht, ist so viele Möglichkeiten. Und er weiß auch nicht, ob dieser Auftrag jetzt 14 Tage geht 
weil dann haben die schon irgendwie das nächste Level erreicht oder ob der jetzt irgendwie drei Monate geht oder so. Also das, das muss man dann irgendwie, und das haben wir auch, wir machen ja keine großartigen Verträge. Wir sind dann einfach so lange an ihrer Seite, bis das Team sagt, jetzt ist gut, Armin. Reicht. Komm mal in einem halben Jahr wieder. Also das ist ja auch okay. Und ich meine, niemand kann das aushalten, jeden Tag mit Armin zu arbeiten. <lacht> so intensiv. <lacht> Okay. Genau, so, bevor ich jetzt noch mehr äh, in die Aufzeichnung quatsche, ähm, beende ich erstmal die Aufzeichnung. <lacht>